Good evening, everyone, and welcome to episode 25. Ah, oh, the silver anniversary of Boys from the Baltic Star. It's Friday night. Thank you for joining us. Friday is a wonderful evening to go and enjoy yourself. There's a lot of competition. And if you have come to watch us tonight, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, if you have happen to chance onto us while watching live or on demand, then please consider, and you like what you see, please can't can't force you. Um, please consider following us on Twitter at Boys Baltic or, or here on Twitch. That'd be absolutely magical. We really appreciate that. Um, I am Luke. I'm in the blue corner. Hello, everyone. Lovely to meet you. Next to me tonight in my favourite position. Can we get a fist bump? Uh, yes. Yes. Is my uh, my comrade, my buddy in, buddy in arms. The man I've missed all week. We've both been away on holiday and I've been there singing by the window. It is, uh, <laughs> it is Ewan. Good evening, Ewan. Good evening. And uh, the opposite of my comrades and my, my buddy in arms sits two across from us. He is to be feared. He is to be reviled a bit too far because you're all right, really. <laughs> it is the master of Twin Peaks. It is... Ben. Good evening, referee Ben. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I hope you've both had a, a good break. We, we have. All the better now to see both of you again. Well, that's very yeah. sweet. And I'm sure that's true in at least one of our cases. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> yes, and thank you very much, both of you, for, for popping in in the chat for my um, weird text adventure thing last night. Thank you for that. Well, we had great fun. We couldn't, we couldn't go a whole week without some kind of uh, banter or abuse directed your way then, could we? A bit of after-hours chat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good evening, Ben. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the suspense there is... Wow. The tension is building. I could feel it. <laughs> it's well, it like is a... Friday the 13th Ooh, a little, a little bit of horror would not be inappropriate no I know <clears throat> yeah. so I hope you've warm, warmed up your dice appropriately oh I haven't actually no early rolls please <laughs> thanks for the reminder because you're going to need these oh no <laughs> so we're, we're taking on legions of buckyball fanatics <laughs> Okay. Let's, let's see how they do. Uh, Hopefully, Luke's a bit better. I'm going for the silent but violent approach. Come on! <laughs> yeah, there they go. Okay, they're feeling good, sweaty. As okay. dice should be. All right. Well, sweaty is is probably the way to go in this case. It is ridiculously hot and humid out there. Um. And, you know, that's just the, the way it is at the moment where we are. Um, for those who don't know, we don't actually live all that far apart. So weather tends to apply to all of us equally. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. Most of the time, yes. Um, right, so perhaps it's time to get underway. Um, so last time, uh, the boys from the Baltic Star finished off some final tasks on Geeka. Uh, before deciding to return to the Baltic Star. They arrived in time for Richard Davies' leaving party and selected the members of the crew who would accompany them on the Buckyball cruise. Uh, Rick Burlow, Gok Sutter, Sammy and Johnny Cress, Rose and Zoe Hathaway all came along for the ride. They then called for transport and were taken to the Seamstress, the cruise ship that would presumably be their home for the next two weeks. They found their rooms learned how the ship is arranged and discovered that, in addition to the buckyball pitch, there was a ski slope and the most elaborate swimming pool or possibly hot tub they'd ever encountered. Their suite, provided by Peral Karar, the Aslan noble, is enormous and perfectly situated to enjoy the sport. They're even offered seats in the Geeka fans section uh, so they could cheer their team surrounded by the like-minded. On board the seamstress, they expect to meet some archaeologists, who might be able to help them understand why the word carving seems to come up so very often in their journey. And no doubt in the thousands of other passengers aboard, 
there might be many more adventures to be found as well. And that is where we resume the story. Now, here's a thing, because not all of you actually made it to the suite, as I recall. One of you took a little detour at the ski slope. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. Of course he did. So, would you like to um, to sort of explore that, or would you like to just head on to the suite once you've had a moment to sit in the snow for a minute? I would. I would love. I would love to explore it a little bit. Um, okay. The, the way I see it folding out is, <laughs> you sat there in the snow as the lift empties of skiers, uh, and it waits for the first, you know, quite not quiet moment, but moment where there don't appear to be serious ski fans around. Mm-hmm. If there is such a time, uh, yeah. and then maybe just edges slightly towards the uh, the precipice of the snow cut of the peak and looks over to see how far down it is or steep it is. What kind of what kind of what kind of uh, color slope are we on here? <laughs> <laughs> That's the equivalent. <laughs> um, it's on a sort of curve. So right at the top, it is quite steep, um, but it gets shallower the further down you go. Um, at the top, it's probably better than, you know, more than 45 degrees. So really quite steep for a um, for an inexperienced skier, um, though well within range of a of a particularly skilled skier. I mean, it's not that terrifying. Um, by the time you get halfway down, it's leveled out quite a lot and it, it curves quite smoothly into a large flat expanse of snow. Um, but your, your eyes are also slightly playing tricks because of the curve of the ship. In other words, the, when it gets to, to the flat, so to speak, of course, it's not a flat at all. It's a concave surface that actually curves upwards. So if you look out sideways, um, if you could see all the way, you would eventually see more snow at eye level, though you can't because the curve of the roof, so to speak, would cut that view off. Yeah. Um, the the total height from where you are down to the uh, the floor is around about a hundred meters. Ooh, hey, this is a big scale place. Quite a wide slope. It's um, a double sided slope from where the um, the cable car um, goes through uh, the, the sort of central tube lift goes through. Um, you have. Uh, if you come out onto a, a sort of fairly flat surface. Um, in two sides, you can basically just see hull. The other two sides follow the curve of the of the ship out. Um, in a sweeping um, shape around the seam of the um, of the ship, if you know what I mean, the the seam of the of the buckyball. buckyball. Yeah. And so, in two directions, one effectively towards the starboard side, one towards the port st- side of the ship. There are these hundred meter or so steep slopes of snow and ice. Wonderful. He's he'll go. He's going for it. Um, he doesn't have any skis, but uh, he does have his ceramic carapace, carapace on, which I'm assuming is reasonably smooth, certainly hard. <laughs> yeah, certainly, very much so. Uh, so he'll he'll lie on his back and go feet first down and try and uh, lift his legs up so most of the weight is on the uh, smooth part of his back that is protected by the by his armour. All right. Sense. Uh, can you roll for me an athletics dexterity with dexterity, please? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, that is a six plus four is ten. Okay. Um, initially, there is that sort of quite sudden acceleration as you tip over the edge um, and you build up speed quite quickly. Uh, but then though you keep going quickly because the slope begins to level out a little what you find is of course you don't get significantly faster you you hit a speed and then you keep going at that kind of pace 
Um, you manage to steer reasonably well. Uh, some of the people who are skiing down are, are cutting back and forth quite um, slowly in a zigzag a, across. So you you fly past those with with great great enthusiasm. Um, others are heading more directly down, and for them it's uh, they're they're able to beat you to the bottom because obviously they set off before you, but also they're on skis. Um, <laughs> it's only the ones who are sort of cutting back and forth at, at shallower angles that you you can pass. Um, you make it completely safely to the bottom, um, coming into a, into a rest. And though, if you imagine from your visual perspective, it does look as if now you're about to slide uphill. Of course, that isn't true, not in gravitational terms. In gravitational terms, you're not sliding uphill at all. You're sliding on the dead flat. Um, so you keep going um along the along the snowy icy surface uh kicking up some powder and so, and some snow around you as you go um eventually coming effectively to a halt or close enough at the foot of a group of um quite enthusiastic members of a family who are pelting each other with snowballs <laughs> uh wonderful he'll um he'll pick himself up off and uh dust dust off the snow try and shake some out I'm assuming some probably made its way deep into the crevices <laughs> of his armour. Um, and look around for the nearest lift and then plan to rejoin the uh, the group. Okay. Yes. The, the, the main lift shaft is, of course, now, from your perspective, buried in a mountain of snow. Um, however, um, knowing that this would be a thing, they have mounted into the sides of the seam a number of um lifts that will literally carry you up to that level and then you can just walk across and out through a doorway onto the top of the slope um and then rejoin the lift or have another go down oh it's tempting <laughs> he thinks to himself you know who'd love this <laughs> i mean once all the bucket balls finished so i would love this grab a few drinks come back here uh i'll go find the others and then he will okay all right. Um, you make your way through. It's it's not, as I say, a complicated thing to find. It's actually um, very much on the main on the main seam strip. It is it is a very very um, high end uh, position to be in this uh, this suite that you have. It is one of the very best suites in the in the station. And uh, as you make your way across. Um, uh, can I um, have a quick intellect roll, please? Ooh. Ooh. Stefan. Uh, yeah. uh. Yeah. Ooh. That's 11 plus 0. 11 plus 0. Okay. Strong. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> um, as you're making your way in, um, you uh, notice a few things, even, even though you're, uh, you know, you're just looking around randomly. You notice that the area directly above the suite um, on the main concourse running around the scene is a fenced off um, area for uh, private parties and events like that, you know, reserved as a sort of bar and restaurant space. Um, directly above it, there is a rack for the seating um, to look at the at the um, at the actual pitch. But that rack has been slid to one side. So for the moment, there is a space directly above this um, area looking straight up through the uh, through the center of the buckyball pitch. And that's indicating that this is um, a place known as the Duke's Tavern. And that this very evening, uh, the captain of the Geeka team will be um, will be present for um, one of the traditional events before the match actually starts. And you know, tickets are available to this event and how to get them on the on the internal computing systems for the ship. Is it currently going on? It is not yet, no. It's expected to start in about an hour. Uh, he'll, he'll run to the nearest computer system. Uh, 
and uh, attempt to buy some tickets. Okay. Um, uh, let's look at how much they are. <laughs> One hundred right, yeah, thousand. Having you scam me out of <laughs> yeah, all of my. Uh, Can you do an electronics computing check for me, please? Mm. That's his pocket nuke that's money. A, that's a minus three. <laughs> uh, but you can add intellect. Oh. Uh, oh, wonderful. That's a minus three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's a nine minus three, so that's a six. Okay. I don't break anything, hopefully. <laughs> no, no. But, uh, but as, as far as you can tell... Um, you are unable to find a way to secure tickets. Either, you know, the, the places that you're being directed seem to imply they're very hard to come by or they may even be all sold out. Okay. Um, he'll swear under his breath slightly, walk away from the computer, uh, and he'll he'll send a message to Kawa, uh, to Soraya, sorry, and he'll... Um, presumably forward on the link or something similar and they just say hey the captain of uh, the geek teams at the at the bar tonight there's some tickets available here i tried using the computer i went round in circles for about a half hour get kawa to get us some <laughs> okay is um as with everything tickets are virtual aren't they yes yes okay the the rest of our party are uh, enjoying their finding their rooms and testing out the showers and fluffing their pillows and opening little doors and cabinets in the suite. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, it's on the pillows. The, the usual <laughs> sort of thing, exactly. Uh, so the message will ping through to Soraya, who um, will go through about 17 different emotions in the space of about five seconds. As she's like, oh, oh, it's Stefan. Oh, it sort of half looks up, even though the ceiling's there. Like, oh, the, oh, ah, huh? <laughs> the captain, an event, <gasps> and then oh, sold out. Oh no! So she, yeah, confusion, ecstatic excitement, um, upset, more confusion, hope, and determination all flick through her mind in very quick succession. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, before. She heads straight off to Kara with great, uh, with a great mission in mind, and um, she says to Kara, she "says Kara, you know how much you love me, yeah. You know, you know how we're really good friends and everything, yeah. You know, like how you know we all have each other's backs and everything, and how much I, I love Bucky Ball and the Geeks, yeah." <laughs> and Kara's like, "Yeah, yeah." Uh, yeah, I see. I see where this is going on. So I As says, a parent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And what do you want here? Um, and then, so Sarah will say what um, about what Stefan's been trying to do and trying to get the tickets and it's failed. And um, Carl will sort of pat her on the shoulder at the excitement. And she'll say, look, um, go, go grab a drink with Stefan. Go and sort of, I don't know, go and drink in the atmosphere, you know, go and go and enjoy a bit of time. I'll, I'll give me a little bit of time. What we got? About 55 minutes. I'll see what I can sort out. Okay. And so, so I will go off to Stefan and, you know, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So maybe they should go off to some, to see if there's a place full of people that they can maybe, you know, get some extra information just in case Kara can't do anything about it. You you know, maybe a bit of, uh, you know, I don't want to say threatening behaviour, but you never know. Sure, sure you <laughs> don't mean something underhand. <laughs> but uh, St- <laughs> Stefan is out there, you know. And, um, <laughs> so, so Sarah will um, head off out and sort of grab Stefan and I guess they'll wander off and we can come back to them in a minute if need be. Mm-hmm. Um, what... Um, Kara is thinking when she logs in with her laptop. Let me see what I've got. I've got intrusion. I've got um, agent. I've got my interface. I've got expert level. I've got communications on that. I've got my hacking. Is there any way, what I would like to do 
is to bring up a list, try and download the list if possible, of people that are signed up to this event. Mm -hmm. And if possible, change the list. Okay. You know, knock out. I, I don't want to be greedy, right? So if I can only get two, we'll see how many. Uh, I want to try and at least get, you know, there's going to be steps to this, I understand, Ben. Um, oh, uh -huh. But, um, you know, if I can try and at least get two people into it and just see how we go from there, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So you want to do a check to see if you can basically hack their system. Yes, please. And secure a couple of tickets. Yes, please. Okay. Right. Um, can you do an electronics computer check um, with you get your plus one for your machine's bonus? I do. Plus, you actually have... Ha is it hacking one? Um, on the computer? On the computer, yeah. I've got um, intrusion. That's, that's hacking, isn't it? Um... Yes, I think intrusion is... Yes, I think it is. Yes, that's right. Um, so you can... Is that, is that intru just intrusion as standalone, or is it intrusion 2 or anything numbered? Uh, I think it's just a standalone, isn't it? It's the tech level 11 intrusion, so it's pretty decent intrusion. Okay, I think that might actually be a higher level. Let me quickly check yeah. the calls. Um. I have a vague feeling that might be a higher level. Oh, I hope so. Um, okay, yeah, all right. Um, you can have essentially for the computer and the software a combined plus three. Okay, cool. And then obviously your electronics computer skill and you can have intellect as well. Okay, so we're on a plus six. This is excellent. Mm. Oh. That's good. This is good. Come on. Don't let me down, Dices. Don't let me down. <laughs> oh, the first of the night. What have you rolled? No, I, I've, I've, over, I've overkilled it for the first of the night. Every time. Okay. Right. Um, you, you, you managed to... Um, She's showing off for the very first step. You, you managed to very subtly um, sneak uh, your way into the system. And uh, can you roll 1d6 for me, please? I can. That's a 1, so it's either great or terrible. <laughs> and, and I never know. I never know which way it's going to go. About um, 10 minutes or so of work, and you are able to sneak into the back of the system. Yeah. Successfully remove a couple of um, a couple of names from the from the list, uh, uh, which is a reasonably large list. There are, there are you know, a couple of hundred people on it, and uh, and you're able to quietly change their names. Two names of your choice. Now, I assume Soraya will be one of them. Who's the other? Now, although Soraya and Stefan are generally friendlies, if I remember correctly, the one other person in our party who owns a tailored blazer is actually Agnar Arnson. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be terrible to own such a splendid blazer and have nowhere to wear it. Hmm. So I think maybe um, maybe she'll change to Soraya and Agnar. Soraya and Agnar. Yes. Excellent stuff. All right. Soraya and Agnar, their names are down and they are coming in. Oh, their names are on the <laughs> list. Oh, this is magical. I can't have a feeling I overkilled with those dice early on, though. I could probably have done with especially plus six. All right. Yeah, to, to be fair, it wasn't going to be passed on an eight, though. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay, that's all right. Then. That sounds reasonable. That does sound reasonable. Um, cool. So, um, 
she's very smug with herself there. She signs off with a bit of a flourish. You know, hits the final enter button with a bit of a... Mm-hmm. Um, closes it all down. Um, pings Soraya a message saying, uh, grab your blazer, you're in. <laughs> and, then, and then it goes, Agna! Agna! <laughs> sort of looking around, jump behind Agna! Agna! He uh, sticks his head around the corner with a mouth full of pillow mints. Yes? <laughs> <laughs> You haven't wrecked that blazer yet, have you? Uh, no. Uh, have you been uh, longing to wear it? I mean, I have been. <laughs> I have worn it, but uh, nowhere special, you understand. Uh, just wearing it to bed doesn't count. <laughs> hey, fiddles. Oh, then no. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, well, you've got a chance to wear it. Can you um, can you be surprised plus one to a very special um, launch event tonight? The Geeks Captain is going to be there. It's uh, it's just above us, in fact. Ah, oh, that sounds uh, that sounds perfect. Would you, is this uh, is this a sash occasion? Would you say? <laughs> <laughs> well, every occasion's a sash occasion, generally, and I'm very glad you've bought it. I must admit, <laughs> uh, well, brought it, but. Uh, I feel that it might take focus away from the people it should be on tonight. Mm, Soraya. <laughs> yeah, just just give it. Let Soraya wear it if she wants to. Uh, no, okay, yeah, too much. Too, no, just only, <laughs> only, only, only a little. Only a little though. Only a little. I'll save it. I'll save it for game day. Mm. That sounds perfect. It feels like something you should uh, you should wear in a crowd watching sports. It does when the beer snakes start. Start forming. Most definitely. Wonderful. Uh, I'll get ready then, I suppose. Okay. Is uh, is everyone else coming? Uh, no, just the two of you. Um, I'm I'm planning just to chill. I don't, I, I'm guessing the rest of the crew will be up to whatever they want to. It's Ben. It's like night before the game, isn't it? The night before of the everything kicks off, right? It's the the. Le, yeah, Le, Le launch night. The ship will set off tomorrow morning, ship's time. Yeah. On its journey, and then the actual jump will take place in the early evening. And once the jump has started, once the actual um, the sort of uh, jump has begun the actual match will begin. So there's about, you know, 36 hours or so before the actual game begins. But there are some traditions and preambles associated with it first. I'd imagine there's all sorts of, uh, yeah, events and drinking and partying and secret handshakes and gatherings of old friends and things like that, right? Plenty for our crew to get, go and enjoy. You know, we don't have to hold that. We don't have to hold their hands every step of the way, do we? They're they're here to relax. So, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, one um, last, Agnar will just quickly shout back. How much do I uh, owe you for the ticket? Uh, Kara will uh, flick her hair a little bit and give a little wink, and she'll say, uh, "You owe me nothing. You owe Mister." Matheson Smythe, 300 credits. <laughs> Agnar's face tops a little. Uh, As she laughs, I says, don't worry, I've, I've, best, I've got it covered. I think it's best I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't don't, don't <laughs> deny I'll, I'll buy a round. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if it's in the event, he won't be having any. <laughs> We'll get some drinks sent to his seat or something. <laughs> yeah. Find oh, out right. where he's watching the game for <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> good evening, Sock Fiddler, by the way. Uh, the um, While this has been going on and you've been chatting and grabbing your blazers and so on, people are starting to assemble for this event at the Duke's Tavern. Um, and... Uh, 
and so Soraya, who's sort of close to it at this point, uh, can see that um, there's a certain amount of excitement uh, waiting for the arrival of the Geeker team captain, um, who is uh, Matilda, and inevitably one of the Van Cotswolds family. Matilda Von Cotswold. Yes. Um, and there, there are signs appearing outside the, the Dukes, uh, which suggest, interestingly, that some of the traditions might involve the bar on the diametrically opposite side of the pitch as well. Up the geeks. Sorry, we had a redemption, a very important redemption. Up the geeks. Up the geeks. To Matilda von Cotswold, the greatest captain the team has ever had. Our chance of victory Up this year, lads. Our biggest chance of victory. Let's beat those Dilabru scumbags. Is that true, man? Is any of that true? <laughs> um, I think a lot of the um, the fans would argue that her father was probably the greatest of the Geeka captains. Oh. But she's still young. She's still got time to uh, time yeah. to best him. Yeah, and as we know, I mean, Geeka is a relatively young planet in terms of having a big um, mm. a big presence. So so there's there's nothing but growth ahead of them, I'm sure. Wonderful. Oh, I hope. I, oh, imagine if our fathers hear hear this thing. We could go and grovel at his feet. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to meet Matilda von Cotswold's father, the greatest captain the geeks have ever had. Up, up the geeks. <laughs> Hi, I'm a big fan. Is your dad here, by the way? Is your dad here? I'm so, I'm so <laughs> the, 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 the greatest captain the team's ever had. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh. like being introduced to Ian Chapel, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're chatting to him, you're kind of constantly looking over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh. Um, we've... Oh, we've had... Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Oh, no, you take it. I no, you take it. You were... No, you were... The... You were the... <laughs> go. We've had an NPC. Thank you, Sock Fiddler. Oh, the NPC. Algernon yeah. de Malvern Hill. Yeah. I like that a lot. Bitter rivals of the uh, Van Cotswolds, apparently. Uh, wow. Yes. So, sounds like well imagined. Sounds like their family's involved in the water industry. Malvern Hill sounds like a sparkling water to me. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. Some. It could be. Yes. Um, yes, indeed, it, it could be, but. Um, But yes, the uh, the suggestion is that there is an identical tavern, or in, in ship terms, identical. There will be a different crew running it, you understand, but but an identical space set up on the opposite side, um, and which will be at the same time uh, welcoming the the Dillabrew uh, captain Boo. to their own ceremonial event. We need to send some people over there to cause trouble. Yeah, Agna will send a fire a message over to the remaining members of our party. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, Soraya, I'm going to let them know about the other uh, the other to do. Should we uh, got any <laughs> got any suggestions? Oh, could we kid could we kidnap the captain on the eve of the game? <laughs> Not nobbling maybe, but food poisoning. I mean, we are here. <laughs> On holiday, <laughs> this, <laughs> we've kind of had a break. I feel isn't, isn't that what we're doing? Um, oh. I tell you what, you send a message. Um. Plausible deniability. <laughs> <laughs> the second time I've said that today. <laughs> yeah, is this the is this your theme yeah, for the day? Is it? <laughs> Plausible deniability is your theme for the night. Mm. Uh, yes. Sarah so, so will send it to Stefan. So, hey, Stefan. Um, Dear Labru was captains over there. If you were at loose end, um, you know, go um, do do something. <laughs> In brackets, plausible deniability. <laughs> some, some, some things just in quotation marks could mean anything, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, you people just suck at espionage, don't you? <laughs> um, well, we like we just like to lay everything out on the table. That's our problem. Yeah, you understand the moment you write something like plausible deniability down, it kind of stops <laughs> being plausible. But um, impossible. Yes, fair enough. Uh, so, are, are you ready to assemble for the the event at Duke's then? Yeah, very excited. Yeah, I think Adnan is all uh, pruned and dressed, ready to go. Okay. So, so Rose can take it seriously. She'll um, she'll she'll have her hair down. She'll have her blazer on over um, over over a dress uh, with a um, with a Gauss pistol strapped to her thigh. Okay. Yeah, it's very James Bond, really. It is. <laughs> mm. That's, and a generic toolkit in her hand, though. Maybe not the generic toolkit. Mm. She, feel, she feels naked with that smoke bomb, though. <laughs> <laughs> Breaching charge. <laughs> we're, we're here. <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, as, as you sort of join the, the queue of people filtering into Dukes, you... You realise that they are very much the the well healed. Um, this is a this is a smart crowd, and uh, and you make your way through the sort of outer gate into a very nicely laid out central circular bar um, with a sort of podium in the middle of it, and then the bar running around the outside, and then outside that, lots of little tables and everything. And because the fixed seating structures that are normally mounted above it during play have been rolled back, as you look up, you can literally see straight into the, the buckyball pitch um, and almost straight down the tube that forms the central part of the wicket. And directly above you in the distance is the, the, the very discernible similar shape of the bar on the opposite side. Uh, with its own lights and its own activity going on and people milling about. Um, yeah, they're a couple of hundred metres away, but it's not beyond your eyesight to see them obviously upside down from your perspective, but nonetheless wandering around on the ceiling, seemingly enjoying their own their own party. Oh, um, what a feeling, walking in, on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the theme of the night as well. Plausible de deniability and dancing Thank on the you. ceiling. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <clears throat> very rapidly, everyone is equipped with their choice of beverage. Um, serving staff bustling around, making sure everybody is is properly properly equipped, and that, that they're they're literally running back fairly quickly to and from the um, to and from the bar. And the so you don't actually have to queue up at the bar yourself. Huge trays of drinks are being brought out and handed to um, to everybody, and and there are a vast array on these on these trays. Um, the serving staff are all dressed in in um, uniforms that are very reminiscent of the of the Geeka team colours, of course, and and even have the team sponsors on them. Mm. And And the party has barely got us underway when suddenly all attention turns to the arrival of uh, Matilda Van Cotswolds. Oh, M MVC, as she's known. Indeed, MVC. <laughs> now, Matilda Van Cotswolds is a very tall, elegantly um, featured woman um and she looks fit and lithe as she moves she's very relaxed she's got you know very athletic movement just very graceful as she moves over the floor um there's no there's seemingly no hurry in her movement at all and yet she moves rapidly to wherever she needs to go it's it's a trait that you notice in the finest of athletes um she comes in and uh shakes hands with a couple of people she obviously recognises um, and then um, starts wandering around and mingling. It's a polite crowd. People don't crowd her too much, but 
wherever she goes, a little knot of two or three people appears. And then after she spent a couple of moments chatting with them, she, you know, politely breaks and goes to goes to meet the next the next little group. Um, so I was a little bit nervous, but instead of being nervous about it, it sort of showing in herself, I guess. She starts fussing over Agnar, who looks perfectly turned out, quite frankly. But suddenly she's like patting his um, his lapels and sort of trying to brush at his fur a bit awkwardly. Uh, come on, you you need to look your best. It's, it's Matilda what are you von Cosmo. Don't, 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 don't look, drink, but don't drink too much. Don't you know? Don't don't get drunk or anything. No, no, no. Really no. Just one, to, just one to calm our nerves, and oh. then we'll stick to the soft drinks and the coffees. Okay. Do they have any mimosas? Uh, yes, they can provide a mimosa. Yeah, then I have, have about six of them. Then please. I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> have one. Don't, don't get too silly. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, one mimosa, please. One mimosa, please. Okay. And and moments later, um, Matilda Van Cotswold hoves into view and is standing in front of the two of you and saying, good evening, good evening. Welcome aboard. Uh, I trust you're both Geeker fans. <laughs> so, so I was managed to put half a cheese and, uh, cheese and pineapple and stick into her mouth at that point. And she's like, <laughs> up the geeks! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're my fa- you're, you're, oh man, Matilda von Cotswold, oh, uh, <laughs> just to go, just, just like melt down. His clothes. She says, "I'm, ah, uh, I'm so happy to be here. Um, thank you, and um, I really hope you smash those dealer brew." Um, so, well, Soraya's social skill is four, so so it's not great. Well, we'll obviously do our best. Um, uh, but uh, excuse me, I, I have to, you know, go and throw out the ball back in a minute. And she hustles off round and, and through and behind the bar. Um, Soraya buries her, her head in, in Agnar's shoulder. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she goes behind the bar and uh, and stands on the inside of the bar, looking more or less in the direction of the podium. And then a an equally tall man, much older, um, steps quite quite sprightly up onto the podium in the middle of the of the bar um, and stands there. And he sort of clears his throat and says, "If I may have everyone's attention, please." Uh, Obviously, you don't want me to go on too long. You're waiting for me to introduce my daughter. And I will do that in a moment. But for those of us who are unfamiliar with uh, the traditions of the evening, if you cast your eyes directly overhead, you will see the end of the wicket tube for the pitch. And in fact, where I'm standing in the middle of this podium is directly in line with the centre of that tube and the podium in the bar opposite, the kookaburra. And he sort of looks up and gives it a squint. And he says, now, throwing a ball through that tube so it will reach someone standing on the podium up there. That's... That's one hell of a task. And by tradition, the team is not allowed to bring their their finest bowl or anything. It has to fall to the captain, whoever that may be. But of course, the captain's not the only one who can have a go. Just the first one to have a go. So, <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it is my great pleasure to introduce my daughter, the captain of the Geeker team, um, Matilda Van Cotswold. 
and he steps off and Matilda steps up and this time she's holding a buckyball in her hand um, and she stands there and says okay we um, we tossed a coin and it's my throw first so wish us luck we don't believe in this superstitious rubbish about you know whoever makes the best throw here wins the match but um but there's still a bit of pride in trying to get it through and she uh she sort of lines up remember she's effectively got to throw the ball perfectly vertically from her perspective straight up not a very easy throw for anyone and she uh, squints sort of left and right a bit and tries to work out exactly how to do it. And then she reaches down, takes the ball from low between her knees and flicks it up right towards the center of the wicket. And it could not fly more perfectly. It goes straight and perfectly not only through the wicket but through as far as you can tell the middle of the wicket at the near end and though because you're at a slight angle to the wicket you can't quite judge it so well at the far end it seems to keep going without any kind of deflection it flies through both sets of the buckyball truncated icosahedrons without issue and seemingly by eye will land right on the podium in the kookaburra opposite and in fact no doubt would have if the ball was not caught and then held aloft above his head by the man standing on the podium at the kookaburra end who waves it enthusiastically then takes his own moment and attempts the return throw. And he also crouches down, springs and throws upwards. And his ball passes through the first two layers, the outer layers from his perspective of the truncated icosahedrons, but just misses the outside of the central <coughs> um, wicket tube just drifts off wider and wider aside until as it comes down towards the, um, the, the, the area of Dukes, it's a long way away from the podium. That slight drift at the beginning has now become bigger and bigger and bigger. And Embarrassing. as it starts to approach, Soraya, it is coming almost directly for you, standing near the fence at the edge of the... Ah! Of the of Dukes. Um, well, there's only one thing I can do and attempt to catch, like a like a kid at, kid at a test match. Okay. The, the, uh, it's the, coming fairly swiftly from the directly ahead. The mimosa drops out of her hands, shattering on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah, she reaches. Can you roll? No. Uh, an athletics dexterity check with dex, oh. please. Oh. They're all zeros. Okay, that's okay. Come on, we can go. We can do it. We can do it. What we hit? Oh, it depends how hard it is, Ben. Depends how hard. Mm -hmm. Here we go. What have you got? Oh, double fives. Excellent. It is good enough not only to catch the ball, but to do it with a fair degree of panache. It <sighs> slaps firmly into the hand. Um, is gripped there, and you are able to hold it aloft exactly, exactly where you where you caught it. Um, there is just the faint sound from all that distance away of some groaning and jeering from the bar at the other side, but it's almost immediately drowned out by cheers from around you at Dukes. Gooks, 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 gooks. Um. Soraya automatically looks to looks around to see if the dumb thing is to throw it to anyone specific, I guess. She's reveling in the catch, a little bit awkward. She's loving it, of course, a little bit awkward as well. Like, do I need to throw it to someone specific now? Someone who has, you know, 
super skills. If you look around, your your eye will quickly catch Matilda Van Cotswold, who is beckoning you over. Looks like it's your turn. Ha ha ha! Sorry, can Agnar just quickly step in and just uh, he'll, he'll just grab some iron and just say, here, let, let me hold your jacket for you, and I'll take off her blazer if she'll allow it. She'll loosen right. up the... Uh, she'll, try and, uh, she'll try and slink, like, effortlessly out. You know, like... In a in a film where someone like grabs the collar of the of it and sort of pulls it back and they just sort of the arms go back, like like they're doing the um, the thing you run off the anime and just slip out of it. That's what that's what she's hoping for. And she sort of m- marches over towards MVC. Uh, and if we could come back to that moment as well after that, I would <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Luke. <laughs> oh dear. All right. So, um, you are beckoned through the crowd. Lots of people, you know, giving a gentle round of applause and some words of encouragement. Um, as Soraya is shown through and up onto the podium, where the place is is ceded to her by the captain of Geeka. Um, and she says, you got this. Just straight through the wicket. Don't worry, about the bar. You get it through the wicket, the bar will take care of itself. Uh, she, uh, she looks at MVC. She looks across uh, at the greatest captain that the geeks have ever had. Who I'm guessing is no that's still watching from his lofty oh, yes. vantage point. Yes, oh, he's uh, he's very <laughs> proud of the way this has gone so far. <laughs> oh, she's feeling the pressure. I'm just uh, bu- buying some time as I warm the dice. The the sweat is dripping off them right now. Getting the hope. And she uh, she eyes it up. She uh, she tries to slow her beating heart. She's racing. Her mouth is suddenly very dry. And, uh, and she throws. Off you go. It's an athletics dexterity with dexterity. <laughs> Great, thanks. So it's a zero, it's a zero plus zero. <clears throat> zero plus zero. A nine. Okay. The, the, they're all good rolls, but they're getting worse every single time I've rolled. So we need to the, do all the good stuff early in the episode. The ball sets <laughs> off encouragingly at a very, um, a very brisk pace. It looks perfect as it leaves the hand. And as you watch it, you're looking up, and from your perfect position, of course, you can see it's just beginning to move off centre. It isn't quite lined up ideally. And as it goes, you're waiting and hoping that the wicket will come soon enough to stop it drifting <laughs> outside the width of the tube. And uh, and as it goes, you're looking at it and squinting at it a little bit, and your head's sort of turning as you think, mm, is that going to make it? And it does just catch uh, the inside of the tube of the wicket, um, taking the most subtle of angled deflections off the inside of the tube and then heading off back down towards the um, the podium at the other side. But because it took that little bounce, that's actually stopped it from drifting wider. And it means that at the other end, the um, the the person who's taken the spot, whoever that might be on the on the <clears> podium <throat> at Hukabara, is just about able to reach out and catch it off the side of the podium. A vastly better effort than the um, than the return from the uh, from the Dillabru captain. Uh, a solid a solid go. Good. I think I've, I think I've um, I think I've. Prove myself to be okay. That's the main thing. I don't want to embarrass myself. Yeah. And uh, and you can hear, you know, Matilda Van Cotswold saying, okay, stay put. You're there for the catch. What? No! <laughs> no! This is winner stays on. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. It's a few moments later. And the ball coming back towards you. It's not a terrible throw. 
but it does again drift just wide of the of the wicket tube and because of that as it keeps going wider and wider oh, on its good. way down it's actually going to land outside the bar at your end oh, dear. and so um matilda hops up next to you gives you a little pat on the shoulder it's like so far <laughs> so good <laughs> and you can see out in the bar one of the one of the punters is looking up hands open waiting to snaffle it um, as it comes flying down, and does in fact do so. Um, is it a Tim? Is it a Tim? <laughs> we've, had a, we've had a Tim redeemed. It's, I hope it's a Tim taking a break, um, taking a break from one of his hotels to just enjoy <laughs> enjoy the cruise. Well, sometimes Tim, Tim are plain clothes. You may not know they're a Tim. <laughs> oh, that's, that's deep. But yes, that's it's Tim. Un unknown Tims. Yes, definitely, Tim. But uh, but yes, and the as the evening progresses, this ball is thrown back and forth um, between Dukes and Kookaburra, uh, back and forth across. Some throws are good, some not so good. Uh, some, as the evening wears on, become increasingly giggly and less and less good. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, oh, finally, I can imagine some of the end of night throws. Fi finally, <laughs> though the um, though the throwing back and forth is still going on, it's now become more of an ad hoc. Anyone standing anywhere in the bar is just trying to knock the drink out of the hands of anyone <clears throat> standing in the other oh, yeah. bar, kind of thing. You know, it, it's, it's much less enthusiastically being <clears throat> monitored. People aren't really paying attention anymore; just glancing up every now and then to see if one's coming at their head. <laughs> but the uh, but while this is going on, you do um, see once again the former captain, Achilles Van Cotswold. Oh, God! Uh, Strong man. Leap up onto the, um, onto the stage and say, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. We've um, had the first of our key traditions, and of course it is time for the second. Uh, please, those who would like to play in the uh, fan match, the limited overs match, uh, please put your names forward immediately. Um, those who submit their names here will, of course, be playing for the Geeker fans against the Dillabrew fans, and the match will be played tomorrow. And we're obviously looking for people with the kind of reflexes, the kind of um, skills that will bring victory to the Geeker fans and earn pride and honour for our team. So anyone who would like to put their name forward for the limited over game, it's just for fun. And like all things that are just for fun, it means much more than things that aren't just for fun. It's, it's not just it's for pride and honour. Up the geeks. Fiddle's correct. Up the geeks. This is a, geeks. a stirring speech. Up the, geek. Quite Up the right. geeks is for everything. It's for everything. So if any of you would like to play for the geek uh, one day side, uh, just for the... Um, the preliminary match before the before the test match gets underway, then uh, put your names down. Uh, we'll be announcing who's made the team tomorrow morning. Uh, so make sure you're available to play tomorrow. Oh. Oh. So I, who's now a few mimosas in, it's been a mimosa night, really. Um, <laughs> an emotional night. <laughs> an emotional <laughs> night. It's been an emotional night. Um, uh, I, I spent the whole time a bit less often trying to straighten up poor Agnar, who's who's far surpassed her in terms of being a decent person to be around that night. Um, she's like, oh man, we should do it. We should do it. We should do it. Yeah, and put Stefan's name down as well. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on, come on, Agnar. <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. Me, me you, let's get, Steph, let's get yeah. Stefan down. And let's get, let's get... Um, Sutter's name down. Sutter loves Sutter loves Buckyball. That's good. That's good. That's so we're going to put down. Uh, uh, you happy with that, Ewan? If yeah. we put, uh, we're going to put for hope of selection. You know, at the mm -hmm. captain's decision, Soraya, Agnar, Stefan, and Gerg. And Gerg. 
he loves it. He okay. Loves, he doesn't know. He doesn't know what's he, going he on. He does. He does enjoy the game. He does enjoy the game. I mean, he may not technically actually be good at it, but he certainly loves it. <laughs> he loves it. That's the important thing. Yeah, quite right. When else is he going to get the chance to play on such a pitch? Oh, what a dream! His day's getting better and better. <laughs> yeah, quite right. Um, yeah, it is. It is a good evening for for him to be. You know. A good day for him to be joining in and playing some buckyball, I'm sure. And on such a pitch, you know, in front of a crowd, oh. it's, it's a, it's an opportunity, isn't it? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? No fan would turn that down. <laughs> yeah. So, um, with with that in mind, um, it is now at the point of the evening where the the party is. You know, slowly beginning to wind down. People have had a few drinks. The the um, the traditions have been observed. Uh, clearly, the Geeker fans are very enthusiastic about the fact that their captain managed to thread the needle rather beautifully. And the alternative, not so much. Um, you know, well. that, that was that was a good moment, and it it bodes well for the upcoming Test match. It's a sign, and uh, it, it is. And and as the um, <clears throat> as the party begins to wind down, I think that's where we should take our break. Oh, up the geeks! What a time! Up the geeks! Up the geeks! What a time! Sick break. So with that, with the scent of early victory in our nostrils, and um, the taste of regurgitated mimosa in our mouths, um, it's time for the toilet. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> very much for Soraya, I'd imagine. Um, how did Agnar, was Agnar controlled tonight? How was he feeling, you? Yeah, he was quite, um, he was quite civil, quite, you know, on his best social behaviour, as is to be expected. He always is, unless he's, <laughs> unless he's trying to poison a world leader, he's always on his best. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. When he's not working. <laughs> um, I would like to pop back to that moment though. At some yes. Point, that is, yes. That is exactly would you, would you like to do about. that now, or can it wait whatever, until after the break? Whatever's good for you. It makes sense. Okay. Difference. Yeah. Let, we, we 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 will do that after after the break then. Okay. Glorious. Oh, it can be like a pre previously a buys from the <laughs> Baltic Star. <laughs> it works quite well, I think. Good. Well, right. Then we're going to be back in five. Don't go anywhere. We we love you all and uh, get upset when people leave. It won't take long. Toodaloo.
something like this. I own this one. Uh, ben is on Twitter, but um, he refuses to go on there because he's like, well, fancy. And, um, I'll, I'll put you on, it's not fair. Ben was laughing then, sorry. Um, apparently, he has an account. I, I did check it out the other day, actually. Um, he doesn't follow anyone, and about 16 people follow him, so that's good ratios. So if Ben does start following people, it'll ruin his ratios. So, I, are you ever going to join? Are you ever going to join Twitter, Ben? Um, maybe, but I, I have too many things to keep an eye on at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's, that's it. That's straight from the horse's mouth. Fiddles. Hope that's okay. <laughs> oh, no, that's should, we, should we get back to the show? Should we get back to the show? Yeah, let's. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, he should he should stay in this niche more often. Right, okay, hang on, let's uh, uh, let's keep on talking on while I do all this nonsense, right? But be quiet though. Music off. Awesome. There we go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> uh, who's giving the toast this evening? I'm I'm pre I'm pretty sure that's me. Yeah, as is yeah. as is tradition. Um, as per usual, this time every week we raise a glass to a fallen comrade, great, great or bass. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know what what else I can say this week. Frankly, um, he was a good man. He was a good bartender. He was a poor fighter. We didn't listen to him when he told us that, and we bought him in a cinema. <laughs> And now he is no longer. Um, so I'd like you all to raise a glass to the late great Grey Hill Bast. The late great Grey Hill Bast. To the late great Grey Hill Bast. May his spirit live on. <laughs> that is astonishing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the internet. <laughs> what do you expect? To Grey Hill fiddles, to Grey Hill. To Grey Hill. Cheers. Yes. Now, uh, as as we left off, um, I was being reminded that um, that our wonderful Agnar, who is weirdly kind of on camera at the moment, <laughs> um, had a had a little thing that he wanted to do while the party was still underway, while he was uh, helping Soraya with her coat. Uh, yes. Once uh, once he's helped her off with her jacket, he'll you know fold it nicely over his arm. Um, and he's not gonna, he's not going to lick it, is he? He might do. <laughs> can you can I type that into something? <laughs> um, he'll look around the room and he'll try and find the uh, former captain Achilles Achilles if he can mm -hmm. spot him somewhere in the room. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sp spotting him is not difficult. He's <laughs> he's by the bar and you know he's. Watching events unfold, his his part of the evening is essentially done now. He's done his introduction, and and people are coming up and saying how nice it is to see him and everything. But he's about yes. Uh, wonderful, Agnar will he'll make his way over to the bar, uh, and he'll lean up on the bar next to him and just say, uh, uh, "Good e good evening." Um, I realise <laughs> this is very uncouth of me. Um, and my my dear friend over there, and he'll point over to Soraya as she's, you know, stretching or warming up or getting ready to throw, mm -hmm. throw the ball through the wicket. Um, she's a massive fan, uh, and she would never do this herself because she's much more civil than I am. You understand? Um, I don't suppose there's any chance you could autograph her jacket for me. Ah, oh. roll a persuade for me with a social, please. <laughs> You'll have oh, to bear with yes. me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty difficult to see out of. <laughs> not to lie. It's a good job you're not having to dodge incoming balls, isn't it, really? Yeah, definitely. That is a ten. Minus one total. A nine. Okay. Um, yes. 
Um, well, he, he beams with delight and he says, well, of course. Um, and he, uh, he sort of turns the jacket over to find a, a suitable spot, um, autographs it across the sort of shoulder. Um, and then uh, hands it back. And as he does, he um, takes something out of his uh, pocket and tucks it into the pocket of the jacket and pats it. So a present for a fan, you know, and hands it back. That's, uh, that's most, uh, most gracious of you. Um, apologies, I didn't introduce myself in the... Uh, in the moment, my name is uh, Agna Arnson. Uh, that is my friend Soraya over there. Um, can I can I get you a drink? As as a small way of thank, saying thank you. Um, he smiles and says, "Good timing, given that the drinks are all paid for here." <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps uh, perhaps some other time around the uh, around the station. <laughs> Some other time, indeed. I will look forward to seeing you during the during the week. Uh, and are you? Uh, I'm indebted to you, kind sir. Okay. Achilles von Cotswold. What a guy. Uh, and then at some point, uh, when Soraya's done, he will slip her back into the jacket and he'll say nothing for now. Okay. Fair enough. Um, right. So as the as the sort of party breaks up and Soraya um, gets her jacket on, can you um, roll a streetwise check for me, please? For, for Soraya with the intent. maid. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I like streetwise. I don't quite like internet. Come on. Okay, yeah, the numbers are going down, but it should be enough. It's seven plus two is nine. Okay. Uh, yeah, Agnar's had a couple of drinks, and he can't quite hide the <laughs> grin on his face. Um, and, and when you've got a face like Agnar's, a grin is a serious thing. Um, yeah, there's a lot of grin there. <laughs> and... Uh, and and yes, he, he, you you can't. He's sort of given away the fact that there's something going on. Um, so as you sort of put the jacket back on, you're sort of a bit more yeah. alert, and you do spot the um, the signature on the on the shoulder. Oh, Agna, you've been um, you've got a new job advertising toothpaste. <laughs> uh, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. There's um. My my uh my blazer's a bit dirty. I'm considering I might wash it tonight. And uh, no no no, a... no 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 no. Ah, what have just, I... he'll, he'll just tap her on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I had a word with uh, with your friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that person, that been quite uh, enamoured by. <laughs> I have no idea who he is. <laughs> Uh, she sort of uh, uh, she sort of pulls the jacket off, slips out of it, and looks sort of turns it around, looks at the front, and just gives Agnar a massive, great big hug. And says, "Oh, you've you've made my night. I've been able to make a fool of myself in front of Matilda. I've I've shown my skills, and now I've got the autograph of the best ever captain." She doesn't say it too loud, just in case Matilda's listening. Wow. The best ever captain <laughs> of the geeks on my shoulders. You absolute legend. And uh, gives him another hug and forces a, forces a little chin-chin with the glass. And uh, slips it back on very proudly. But is a bit aware that she doesn't want to bump into anyone with it or any spillages or anything. <laughs> so like, I'm going to have to frame this now. I'm going to have to buy another jacket. There's no way I can just wear this around. <laughs> I'd, uh, he'll he'll just say to her, I'd uh, I'd check the pockets first if I if I were you. Um, she's gonna check the she's gonna check the pockets. 
Uh, ben, while I uh, while I up the geeks from fiddles, up the geeks. What? Uh, okay. I, I bet I bet the Dilabru former captain wouldn't have done that. I've had he's a total bellend. Mm, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So she's going to start working her way through the pockets. The uh, I, I don't know. I don't okay. know if the I don't know if the front ones are real or not. You know. You know how blazers are. Yeah. Uh, no, tucked in the inside um, pocket. <laughs> Um, you find uh, a, a new thing, an unfamiliar thing, something you didn't expect to be there. It is a small um, card, not much bigger than a sort of business card sized uh, card. Uh, but it is, in fact, a two sided um, hollow. Uh, one side showing the, um, the sort of uh, the team, the, the, the geeks team from back in the day. Um, and the other side showing the uh, uh, showing a sort of a single uh, picture of um, Achilles himself in his full get up uh, with a ball and a bat in his hand, you know, doing doing a sort of pose like a kind of like a baseball card, but in a, a holographic sense in physical form. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm getting that sort of Babe Ruth kind of vibe almost, you know. Mm. Oh, yes. Yes. And it's been um, signed across the front by um, by Achilles. Uh, but as you look across the back, you can see that it's also been signed by the 10 other members of the team down the back. Wow. That's, that, that's good. We need to get onto eBay. <laughs> Examine code. <laughs> Examine code. It's a, oh, that is what a beautiful gift! So our wells oh, up again, and more, more, more cuddles. <laughs> what was that, Ian? Sorry. How many of the uh, autograph names are Van Cotswolds? <laughs> um, this is a former iteration of the team. It was before the upsurge of the Van Cotswolds in number. There were only two in the team back then. Uh, good, good years. Peak, peak years. <laughs> the, the pre Van Cotswold years. <laughs> it's it, it you know this is when they were better, of course. It, it's, yeah, it says a lot, really. I mean, there's there's only one uh, member of the team back then who's still a regular on the team. Um, he's a, a strike bowler called Jojo. Jojo, um, Jojo, Jojo, Jojo Van Cotswolds, but he, he's the only. The only one from back then who's still a member of the team now. Do you say he's a, he's a, a strike boss? It could have been Jojo Seema. He's a strike bowler, yeah. No one, will, no one will get that Jojo Seema joke because it's really niche. Because it plays together Jojo Siwa of kids' YouTube fame with seam bowling of cricket fame. So it's mm -hmm. really niche. Only cricket fans that have little girls will get that. So yeah. just, just me. I, I enjoyed it. Jojo Seaman. That's, good. So that's, just, that's the to nickname. To be fair, there have been a fair few little cricket puns thrown into this this evening already. So, um, well, well, so the, a lot of people will have no doubt got them. Uh, the Jukes and Kookaburra is very good. And I like the fact we're in the better of the two bars. <laughs> the, the Jukes, and of course, it's the Duke's Tavern. Uh, exactly. The Duke's Tavern. Taverners. I liked it. It's good. Uh, what, yeah. what, a, what a night this is. Okay. Yeah, just li little little cricket references for those who know the sport. <laughs> well, I'm happy at least. Good. Yeah, that's important. That's important. <coughs> okay. So the um, the the evening sort of breaks up. There's no immediate pressure to leave. You understand. You can drink to your heart's content. The bar is still open, but the the guests of honor have departed now the the sort of the tables are beginning to empty it's it's becoming just a place to sit and have a drink looking up we haven't seen stefan co covered in blood or anything have we across the way <laughs> uh, no but we are going to discuss his evening if he wants to do things in parallel <laughs> uh, is he yeah sure <laughs> okay. Any chance to take oh, the head off? <laughs> it seems like a good moment for me to be able to breathe again. <laughs> and you've got Stefan's top on as well. This is great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, change. I mean, I mean colours. 
I don't quite have his facial expressions down. <laughs> I think it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's very good. So, so yes, indeed, we have um, we, we have reached the end of that segment of the evening. So, Stefan. Yes. You picked a very hot night to wear a full head mask. Didn't you? <laughs> yeah, and I do, don't want to open my door either because the trains will still be going past. Just mm. about, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, Stefan, you were heading around the um, around the seam of the ship to the um, to the other side. Uh, yes. Before he goes, can he? Or whilst he's walking, can he just message Clara and say? Can you get me into the uh, the alternate venue? Uh, Soraya, Soraya's got a mission for me, I think. Uh, she'll, she'll say, oh, I'll give it a go. I think I've peaked early this evening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Cara, you know what to do. You can have plus three for this. Okay. With a, um, it's a, com an, a, a com electronics computer plus um, intellect, please. Okay, so I get a plus three. And then you can have plus three. Computer, intellect, plus another three. So it's plus six again. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. That's good. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, okay. That's, that's okay. That's eight. Uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Okay. So I thought uh, one what happened was the six rolled first. So I, that's why I started laughing. I was, and then the two dropped. So I, I, <laughs> I, I got a bit like a 1d6. 1d6 for me, please. Uh, I was like, ah, this, uh, a five this time. Okay. So um, it, it takes um, Stefan a while to get to the bar. And even when he gets there, he's got to mill around a little while before. Um, you know, before Kara oh. um, can secure his entry in, but she does eventually manage it. Um, so by the time Stefan has been cleared to go into the Kookaburra at the other side, um, the introductions have already taken place. Uh, you've been able to hear them, you understand, and even see them from a distance, but from outside the fence. And... Um, and the team captain, Faden Proust. Um, so, say that again. So that, how Faden, how is it? F A D E N, yep. Yeah. Uh, Proust, P R O U S T. Proust. Um, I, I need to make his name very important for the villains of the On Our Encyclopedia Villains. Faden <laughs> Faden Proust, yes. yeah. Yes, evildoers. Yes. Where Proust. Yes, uh, Proust Proust is a good surname for an evil doer. Oh, probably. Um, so, so Faden Proust has um, has already um, uh, been chanted up onto the uh, onto the platform by the time Stefan enters. Um, so, by the time you've grabbed a drink, uh, Proust is already looking up, waiting for the ball to be delivered from um, from the other side of the of the pitch. Uh. Okay, can I wave down one of the um, people milling around with food or drinks or someone mm. at the bar? Yes. I suppose. Um, Stefan will say, uh, good, good evening, I'll have a... Um, uh, I'll be honest, what's, what's good here? Well, everything's good here. It's kookaburras. <laughs> but what's the, you know... What does everyone come in and ask for? And what does everyone? Co I know, I know. There's um, I know there's a group of people that don't normally come in, but when they want a certain drink, they come here. Wait a sec. Is, is the is the barman Tim? Tim. <laughs> Just make Stefan feel at home. Sorry, thanks, Tim, Fiddles. Tim, Tim. He, can't, he can't Tim without Soraya there. Fid Fiddles is oh, ensuring that Stefan gets a Tim. Stefan Stefan has interacted with the Tims. Mm -hmm. Stefan loves a the Tim. There we go. He's been there. He's been there. He's been there, Tim Dip. He's been there for a Timmy. Uh, he's a, <laughs> he, he loves a good Timmy. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, so what, what's that drink? What do are, what are people come here specifically for, even if they're not regulars here? Um, the, the, the server turns the tray around and says, well, 
you know, team colours being what they are. Um, and she points to the um, the sort of two layer cocktail um, in kind of multi uh, creamy brown and blue, um, which is a liqueur over a kind of uh, cream liqueur as a as a base. I'll I'll take one of those. They look wonderful. Um, it looks like you're all doing a fine job here. Um, and what does the, uh, the the captain looks like? He's doing a fine job as well. Uh, possibly a thirsty job. What does he normally drink? Um, well, the man's an athlete. You know this. So, um, so far, water. I'll have I'll have a nice glass of ice cold water for the captain when he's done. I'll, I'll take that over to him, if you if you wouldn't mind. Sure, sure. Um, so, uh, the, 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 the person pulls out from the lower level of a, t it's a two, um, layer tray basically pulls out a, a large glass of iced water and hands it over as well. Mm, wonderful. Uh, thank you. Thank you kindly. Um, how much, how much are these drinks? Oh, it's a free party, sir. Oh, uh, well in that case, and he hands out how holds out his uh, personal communicator for a tip and tips are a hundred imperial credits. Oh, okay. A hundred credits. Excellent. Hey, Sparrow. Uh, thank you very uh, Thank you very much for your, uh, for your excellent service. Well, most welcome. Okay. A, yeah. A hundred credits. Fair enough. Um, by the time you finish this um, this transaction, there's a sort of sense of expectation as everybody looks up and you watch as the first ball thrown through the uh, through the pitch um, sails right down through the middle of the tube. And if if Proust didn't actually catch it, it would probably um have hit pretty much right between his toes in the middle of that podium. It was <laughs> a damn near perfect throw. And um, and immediately there's sort of, ooh, <laughs> kind of ooh. Thing like this around. It's like, oh, that's not good. He's got to beat that. And then the, um, and then the, the, the guy sort of sets his shoulders, uh, crouches down and he hurls it back. And you can see the sort of oh, feeling in the bar as it just creeps wide of the uh, of the central wicket on its way across. Um, and you see off in the off in the distance as it approaches the the sort of terrain of of um, uh, Duke's the other side, uh, Duke's Tavern. The ball just crunches into. Uh, just quite near the fence, just only just making it in, and is caught by some enthusiastic but not particularly large female fan. Yes, that's me. That's me. That's, that's <laughs> me. Oh. As um as everyone as everyone looks up for the first time uh, mm -hmm. to see the ball come in, um, Stefan will keep his back to the majority of the room, I'm assuming, and face the bar. Uh, just quickly check that the server's not looking at him directly whether they've looked up as well. Uh, and then he would like to pour the truth serum into the water. One of his truth serums. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm liking this. This is, this is something Ben wasn't expecting. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> you, you gave me free reign. <laughs> you, are, you are going to need a stealth check with Dex, please. Okay. Uh, where's his stealth? Guys, that's a. I don't know if you can see that. That's a twelve. Yes. <laughs> plus, plus three. Your first of the night. Fifteen. Yes. Yeah. That is the second best throw of the night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, yes, the um, it's done with extraordinary grace and subtlety. And as the you know, slightly 
disappointed Proust um, steps down off the stage, um, you are able to quite subtly just offer him a drink as he um, as he steps down and he grabs it gratefully. Uh, Stefan will say it. Um, looks like looks like thirsty work, and as it's as is uh, tradition at these sorts of events, down the hatch, and he'll Stefan will knock back his cocktail and put it on a tray that's passing by, and sort of try and encourage him to <laughs> knock okay. back the water. Well, uh, as much, as much as Proust gets. doesn't knock the whole glass back; it is a large glass, but. But he takes a good swig and uh, and you know raises his glass, uh, cheers and 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 takes a good long swig of it to cool himself down, and to um, you know put the slight disappointment of the moment ago. I mean these things happen. It wasn't exactly a terrible throw. It you know th these are not easy things to do to throw with precision a couple of hundred meters is not an easy thing you know. Yeah. Um, and he wasn't that far off center, but. Uh, but however much you rationalise it, the fact is that the the throw coming the other way was damn near perfect, and his not so good. So, um, so indeed, he is uh, he is enthusiastically going to put that behind him, and you know take a good long swig of his water. Uh, wonderful. Stefan will make some. Uh, he'll make some sort of small talk, and he'll say, "Oh no, not it's no uh, no trouble at all. We've got to we've got to have you in tip top shape for the for the game tomorrow." Um, you know, I used to, I don't you wouldn't be able to tell, but I used to be used to be an athlete as well. Not obviously anywhere near your sort of level, but um, enough to know that water is uh, water is a key part of an athlete's diet. And he'll make he'll make some small talk for a little bit. Um, and just try and, I suppose, ingratiate himself slightly, or at least become a reg, you know, a recognisable face. Yes. With uh, with the captain. Um, before excusing himself to go and get another drink, then he'll go back to the bar and he'll get another drink. Okay. Fair enough. Uh. And then I suppose a little while later he'll sort of uh, he'll try and clock the captain again and stagger back somewhat and he'll put on a bit of a I've had more than I have actually had. He'll be in working step mm -hmm. and mode and not have too many. Okay. Um, at the bar, is is there any particular way um, he can set his personal communicator up so it can record video without him holding it in his hand? Has he got like a pocket or something he could... Um, you know, like a body cam, but without actually being a body cam? Uh, you can certainly turn the device on and put it in a pocket. Um, the picture you might get from it would be fairly random. You'd be unlucky to get much of a good picture because you haven't got like a rig for it. But you'd probably be able to get all the sound you'd need. Okay, he'll hold it in his hand, and he'll, you know, he'll gauge the general direction in which to point it, um, and he'll stagger up to the captain and he'll say, "Ah, there's my, uh, there's my good old friend. Uh, how's your, how's your evening? I bought you another water." And he'll hand him over a water, and he'll play on the, uh, play on the drunk bit a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Did I did I did I ever tell you about the embarrassing time <laughs> when I was playing buckyball? We uh, we often had far too many to drink in our uh, the equivalent of the Sunday league, whatever that would be. Uh, and one time, our half our team strolled out onto the pitch with no clothes on. <laughs> would you believe it? But uh, but I, sp I suppose we've all got embarrassing moments like this. What's uh, what's your most embarrassing secret? Um, okay. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to roll a persuade with um, social. 
and you can have a boon on this. Oh, boon. And I need to Tonight I feel we should call them a David boon. <laughs> okay. Uh, that is a five rolled plus one. A six, okay. No, sorry, uh, two fives rolled plus one, so okay. a ten rolled, uh, so that's eleven. Okay. My apologies. Yeah, that, that would be more. <laughs> <laughs> that would, yes. So, okay. The, um, the, the, the chap is enthusiastically trying to sort of almost ingratiate himself with you. He he seems very, very on board with your story and he, he wants to top it. Um, and he says, oh, well, I don't know that it's exactly a secret, but it's one of those, you know, embarrassing moments. I, um, I tried out uh, for the team three times before I was finally accepted. And the only reason they took me on in the first place was because one of their batsmen um, had got injured and they were desperate. And you know how it is. You've got a a team that travels from system to system. Not everybody's eligible to play. And they suddenly needed a fill-in player. And they had, you know, nobody who could do it except me. Uh, so I only got my place through pure luck. And I wasn't you know, expecting anything like it, having been turned down a couple of times. I had a lousy game, but I wasn't prepared for it. I wasn't practiced for it. And everyone said it was fine. It wasn't until a couple of months later that I got my regular call up. And it turned out, I don't even know if that was based on my playing. Because, well, rumor has it, there was an awful lot of gambling on the match I played in. And people bet on us to lose heavily because I was in the team. But because I just about did enough, I didn't let the team down too badly. Well, it turns out some people made a lot of money. And some people lost a lot of money. And it seems that one way or the other, that kind of action can get you selected for a team. If uh, if people think you've got a you you bring a bit of a wild card to the team and might add to the gambling interest, I think that's why I made it in. Of course, this is years ago. I mean, now I've been a regular for ages and been captain for two years, and and a well deserved captain as well. Stefan always his glass. Yes, yes, it's um, it's a good story. He'll sort of pause for a minute. Um. But not, you know, not the kind of embarrassing I'm talking about, obviously. Um, I'm a, a true fan like myself has, of course, heard rumours and stories much, much like that about, certainly about your selection of the team. Um, no, no, I was after, you know, one of those, one of those team secrets that, the, <laughs> that only your, uh, only your closest uh, teammates know. Take me, for example, my, uh, my wife, left me two years ago with the Aslan pool boy. Would you believe it? <clears throat> now that is an embarrassing story that you can't top, my friend. <laughs> what terrible race to be a pool boy. Just fuzzy and wet the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining Rosie's cat trying to clean out a pool. <laughs> she feels as awful. <laughs> oh, that always clogs. Oh no! 
Uh, right. Let me. Okay. Um, he says uh, it's um, it's not exactly the same because that sounds really humiliating. Well, nothing could be exactly the same as that. I tell you. That, that is, you know, very, very humiliating. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the, the closest I come to a genuinely embarrassing secret is I've always got to swear my sister to secrecy because, you know, she supports the geeks, you know. Oh. And because she's family, <laughs> you know, she... She's constantly in and around the team, and I've always got to tell, I've, I've always got to tell her to, you know, to keep stum when she's around, around geeks fans, because you never know. I mean, she hangs around the locker room, she's in and out all the time, as you'd imagine. Yes, yes, uh, that, could, that could be, that could be quite, quite embarrassing. I can... Well, <laughs> uh, more small talk, and you know he'll general general athletes being athletes, and throw his arm around people, and just be a little bit outlandish, like he's had far too much to drink, and put it on a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all I feel I need to play out for the attempt to edit edit out any of him.